We're now going to solve the, another example problem using the Excel spreadsheet which uh, is, enables us to solve the heat diffusion equation using the finite difference technique. And what we're going to do, we're going to take a look at, uh, again, a square plate. Um, we're going to make it a little bit more complex than what we had in the last segment. The last segment of your call, we just had uh, constant temperature boundary conditions. We're going to mix it up a little bit this time, and, and we're going to change the boundary conditions. Uh, the plate is going to be the same size, so we're dealing with a plate that is 0.6 meters wide by 0.5 meters high, and we will have a grid size of 0 0.05 meters and consequently in the x direction 0 0.6 divided by the 0 0.05 uh, that gives us 12 plus 1 so 13 cells going across in the horizontal direction and then in the vertical direction the 0.5 divided by the 0 0.05 gives us 10 and remember we have to add one more and so that would give us 10 plus 1 cells that we have in the vertical direction so let me begin by sketching out the plate and then I will describe the boundary conditions that we have around that plate. Um, so what I am going to do, I'm going to color the first square orange just so that we know where the upper corner is and then I'm going to go across 13 cells. So there we have 13 cells. I will color those orange. And then in the vertical direction, uh, we said that we had 11 cells. So there's 11. And now I will color in the entire plate. All right, so you can see it's a rectangular plate, 0.6 meters wide, 0.5 meters high. And the boundary conditions that we're going to have, on the upper surface, we are going to have a convective boundary condition. And on the right surface, we will have another convective boundary condition uh, with the same uh, convective heat transfer coefficient and temperature, and that being uh, 25 degrees C and 100 watts per square meter. So what I'm going to do, uh, just to color code and make it a little easier for us to remember what's going on with this, I oftentimes like to uh, color code the boundary conditions so that we can easily remember what we had there. And we'll do the same with that. That cell, for some reason, got colored. So let's do a no fill. OK, so that is the upper and the right boundary condition. Now for the left boundary condition, we're told that we have insulation. So we have insulation over on this side. So let's color code that. And insulation, I'm going to pick fiberglass pink. There we go. Uh, and then for the lower surface, we are told that we have a constant heat flux boundary condition. So what is going on there? We could have an electric resistance heater or something like that. So that is hot, a high temperature most likely. So let's make it red. Okay, so there we have all of our boundary conditions. I'm going to make that blue just to give us two. There we go. Okay, so we're interested in what is going on inside of the, the plate, obviously. Uh, and although I've drawn the boundary conditions on the outside, really the boundary conditions are in these cells here. Because if you recall, let me take a look at the picture. Our node, the node where we are solving, the, this is a convective boundary condition on a right-hand surface, so it would be perhaps a cell like that. Uh, this node is on this surface. And, and consequently, the outer perimeter cells, this is where we will be applying the boundary conditions uh, when we build our Excel model and then solve it. So those are where the boundary conditions are. So let's begin by entering in the values. 
Um, what I will do, I will begin, I always like to put a temperature at the starting point and sometimes the Excel model has problems especially if you have a radiation boundary condition uh, because when you paste in the boundary condition it'll complain about a divide by zero error and by putting in these numbers I found that it actually alleviates that problem so whenever you use the Excel model I uh, recommend and uh, not recommend that you need to do this or it won't work uh, put in these values and, and then you can construct it from there so there we have our initial setup for this problem now what we need to do we need to enter in the boundary condition values over here and then find the appropriate cell and copy paste so what we're going to do let's begin by working these boundary conditions here and and here now another thing that i should say our corner cells sometimes uh, if you recall from the last example where we had the fixed temperatures we just took the average between that wall and that wall when we were assigning the corner we're not going to be able to do that in this case and and so what I'm going to do uh, I'm just going to assume that the corner uh, because I don't think I have built any kind of boundary conditions that would have convection and insulation or insulation and constant heat flux or constant heat flux and convection. So uh, as a result of that, what I'm going to do, uh, I'll probably just make that one convection. I'll make this one maybe insulation and that one convection. Uh, and then this one is going to be easy to do because that's convection on both sides. So it's just convection on a corner. But just be aware of that, that uh, you have to make a little bit of an approximation and your model will will have a little bit of error as a result of that but if you make your grid spacing really small as in all finite difference approaches the smaller the grid the better the solution uh, that little error is going to be quite minimal and consequently it should not have significant impact on the solution that you produce but let's begin uh, putting our convective boundary conditions in and we have to determine what material we're dealing with and and just for kicks what I'm going to do uh, rarely in heat transfer are we solve, or, uh, working with problems involving gold. And so I'm going to say that we're dealing with gold. And the thermal conductivity of gold is 317, so I'm going to put that in there. Uh, I said the convective heat transfer coefficient was 100, so 100 watts per square meter Kelvin. Delta X, delta Y, that was 0 0.05 meters, so we enter that. There is no internal generation in this problem. Convective environment temperature in degrees C, that is 25 degrees C, so let's enter that. And you can see when you do that, you enter those values, our grid, uh, grid values, uh, cells, the ones we're going to copy and paste in, they have all become populated now with values. So what we now need to do is we need to scroll down and find the appropriate boundary condition that we can copy and paste in. And the one that I'm going to begin with, let's begin with this corner cell because that's kind of unique. So let's scroll down and look for where we have an upper, there we go. So th this one here is an upper right corner. And what we do then is we click here and let's see, yeah, it is the upper cell, the one that it pertains to the wording. So top right convective corner, I click there. I can go in the formula box and it'll show us what it is computing that particular cell from. And if we scroll up, you'll see that it's also pulling in the values that we had up here uh, for this particular problem. So what I'm going to do, let me do control C and I will paste that in here. So you can see that it's changed color and it doesn't look as if it's done anything. However, in that cell, if I go in the formula box, you can see that it's taking in the values from in here for this particular problem. Uh, and it hasn't changed anything because we said the external temperature is 25 and the initial temperature is 25. So there's no temperature differential. So nothing's going to happen in Excel as a result of that. Uh, now let's work on these upper boundary conditions. So there we go. It would be this one right here. So I'm going to click there. I'll do control C. And then what I'm going to do, I'm going to copy and paste into that entire row. And there we go. And, and you can see here it's doing something. Ah, yeah, the reason why it's doing something here, let me click on that cell. 
And yeah, that's strange why it's starting to change there. Uh, I thought it would have been 25. Uh, I, I guess it's because there's an edge effect. And oh, it's pulling in this cell. Uh, you, you can't see it because that is pink. But uh, this cell is highlighted as well, and we have no value there. So when I said that there's going to be a little bit of an error, you know what I should do? Uh, what we're going to do uh, in order to correct for that, let's find the boundary condition for a left corner, this one right here. So let's click on that, copy, and we'll paste that in there. And there you see it restores it back to 25. But that's because what it's doing is it's thinking that this is now a convective surface, but it really isn't. There's insulation there. That, as I mentioned earlier, is a minor error in the way that the uh, Excel spreadsheet works. Uh, now what we're going to do, we're going to handle these boundaries here. So let's look for convective on a right surface. So that is this one right here. It's right at the top. So that's kind of an easy one to work with. So what we're going to do, we're going to click, copy, and then I'm going to control paste. I'm not going to do the bottom one because it's going to give us that uh, strange effect again. Uh, for the bottom one, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go down and look for a lower uh, bottom right corner. So I'll click on this one here and we paste in. There we go. Okay, so now what we're going to do, let's work with these boundaries here. This was all insulated and it was a left-facing wall. So what we need to now do is scroll down in the spreadsheet. Uh, we don't need a second convective. Insulated boundary. There we go. So uh, K, we said the thermal conductivity. We're dealing with gold, so let's put that in. Delta X, delta Y, 0.05. And Q dot, there's no internal generation. And it would be a case where we have this type of boundary where we have insulation on the left. So I'm going to do a copy and then I'm going to go back up and I will paste in all of these cells. And there we go. And now the bottom one, I'm going to look for the corner. So let's look for insulation in a bottom corner. Uh, yeah, so what we're going to do, we're going to assume there's insulation on the bottom. We know there really isn't because that's a constant heat flux boundary. Uh, but I haven't gone through and come up with insulated on the left and constant heat flux on, on the bottom. If, if you're so inclined, you could come up with all those boundary conditions. But uh, I did not do that when I created the spreadsheet. Uh, and what I'm going to do, I'm going to paste that one in. And now what we need to do, let's handle these ones. These are constant heat flux from the bottom. So we scroll down in the spreadsheet looking for constant heat flux. It's not insulated. Uh, constant heat flux with convection. No, we don't have convection in this case. Uh, constant heat flux boundary. There we go. Uh, and what was the value? Uh, we were told it was 100 watts per square meter, so I'll enter 100 there. Uh, we said that we were dealing with a gold plate, so 317.05 for delta X, delta Y. There is no internal generation. And so I leave that blank. And now we look for the appropriate boundary condition. It's this one right here. Because we have the bottom surface with constant heat flux. So I click there. I do control C. And then I go up. Uh, there we go. There's our spreadsheet. I drag across and I do control V to paste in the value for the boundary condition. Uh, it's interesting. It went to uh, 25.01. Not really sure why. Uh, close to 25. There must be some sort of anomaly. Uh, let me see here. Uh, if I click there, what is it pulling in? It's pulling in those values. So I'm not sure what would be driving that. Uh, it could be round off errors somewhere in the spreadsheet. Not a big deal. It's close to 25. And the last thing we need to do, uh, now that we've done all of this, we copy and paste the internal cells. So what we do, we click on the interior node, and if we look at the formula bar, we see the interior node is being represented by all of the adjoining ones. So we click on that. Uh, we'll do Control C, and then I'm going to copy, and I'll select, and then do Control V, and there we go. Look at that. Uh, heat transfer taking place before our eyes. And, and so what this is going to do, it's going to uh, work, it's trying to converge. I will keep pushing F9.
So and there we go, we're, we're getting to convergence and that's a pretty boring looking solution. Uh, the temperature going from 25.29 at the bottom to 25.23 at the top. And I wonder if this is not because we've used such a high thermal conductivity. So let's give something a try here. What I'm going to do, I'm going to drop the thermal conductivity in all of the boundary conditions that we've assigned. Let's drop it down to 100. So we'll change that and then let's look for all the other ones. Uh, there's one, 100. Maybe that's why heat transfer textbooks rarely use gold. Uh, there's a uh, heat flux was 100 watts per square meter. We'll put 100 there. And let's see, were there any other boundaries that we used? No, I think those were all of them. We didn't use radiation. Okay, so let's go back up to our grid. And I'm going to hit F9 again, and we'll see where that takes us by changing the uh, thermal conductivity of the plate. Again, that's pretty boring. Not much going on. Let's try reducing the convective heat transfer coefficient. So let's drop that to more of a natural convective heat transfer. Let's try 10. I see a lot of stuff going on there, but uh, were there any other places where we had to enter the convective heat transfer coefficient? Insulated boundary, no, that just had thermal conductivity. Uh, that one, surface heat flux, no, we had nothing with the Okay, so I think that was the only one. Let me go back up. So we've dropped the convective heat transfer coefficient now, and I'll keep pushing F9 to see what we get on convergence. So this is taking quite a while. What I'm going to do, let me go into options and what I'm going to do is look at options, uh, was it under, yeah, here we go under formulas, older versions of Excel it might be under calculation, uh, but iteration, I'm going to bump this up. Uh, let's see, maximum, enable iterative calculation. So I'll bump it up to 5,000 and I'm going to reduce the minimum. So minimum change, I'll put it there. Now let's see what that does. Okay, so there you can see now it's marching. Okay, now that's only so interesting again. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to bump up the surface heat flux. Let's make that a thousand. And so that's moving the temperature up. Well, that's going. What I'm going to do, let's bump the convective heat transfer coefficient back up to 100. And were there any other places where we had convective heat transfer? Not insulated, not there. Cost and heat flux, no. Okay, I think that was the only one. We'll go back up. I hit F9. All right, so that seems to be convergence. Now what I'm gonna do, let's select our data, insert, We'll do a contour. That is what it is showing us. Now, if you recall from before, one of the things about Excel is it flips this around. So I got to go layout, axis, depth, and then show reverse. And so that is more like what we're 
simulating and so this surface over here is our insulated boundary this is the constant heat flux and you can see that that has the highest temperature uh, we have convective and convective here the lowest temperature is in this upper corner uh, which is where we have the largest amount of convective heat transfer so that is an example of using the Excel spreadsheet to solve the heat diffusion equation where you have more complex boundary conditions. And it also shows that you can really play around with this quite a bit. And, and watch if I change this to 50. Now we'll run that. And so what it's doing is going through trying to converge. and automatically our plot updates. So it shows uh, the utility of this because pretty much everybody has Excel uh, in their office computer or if you're a student uh, and, and it's pretty easy to use this. You can share it. You can do quick kind of back of the envelope calculations using finite difference and you don't need to have very expensive commercial software in order to do it. Uh, the interface is not the greatest. Uh, that's because I developed it, but it works. It's functional. Uh, and it was originally based off of an Excel code that uh, was in the back of a textbook by Holman, a McGraw-Hill textbook. And, and that's where this idea originally the motivation came from. But then I added a lot more boundary conditions, made it a little bit more user friendly, I guess you could say. So that is the Excel model. Uh, in the next segment, we'll play around with radiation and see what that does.